So this episode, we're only going to review two events coming from Japan on Japanese time. We have Choco Pro 192 with two matches, a tag team match and a three-way match. And of course, a very interesting produced show by none other than Suzuki Goon members, Takami Chunuku, and of course, Taichi. And this name of the event is called Taka Taichi Mania 3. Uh, the New Japan World decided to broadcast on their web page on this one. But also, the entire platform was used by Just Tap Out, which is Takami Chunuku's promotion. And I can't wait to review this one because it's really exciting. And I think you guys may like it once I'm finished reviewing all of it. So, let's get ready for another episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to Deleted Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay right here. So let's begin with Choco Pro 192. Uh, first match we have is of course a tag team match. We have too much energy. Chi Koshikawa teaming up with Yuko Sakurai. Um, don't know if I ever seen her before because I watched a lot of the Japanese wrestling. I cannot remember in what promotion she's in, but sooner or later that name will pop in my head and I will remember. So be patient with me. And their opponents is of course my favorite tag team, the Best Bros, Mei Shiruga and Balinaki. Now this is a uh, as you know. Best Bros are trying to be the best tag team of 2022, and that's exactly what they've been doing. Now, keep in mind, there's a bit of the intense of rivalry between both Mei and Chi because they're about trying to prove who is the better one. So it's either in tag teaming or in, of course, how do I say, in singles. But this match was pretty good because, you know, it showed no matter how... Uh, no matter who gets in front of the best bros, they will always come out on top. Now, I would have assumed that they were going to finish the matchup with the double roll-up onto whoever. But it was Balinaki who picked up the victory when he rolled up Chiko Shikawa and, of course, made the pin. Now, our next match is a three-way match. We have Masa Takanashi, Yuna Mizumori, and, of course, the Super Asia Interim Champion, uh, Sean Chido. Now keep in mind, this is not the first rodeo these three have come across each other in singles competition. Basically, they all want both Yuna and Masa wanted a shot of the title that right now uh, was his name Sean has. So basically, anything could happen. So either Yuna or Masa could uh, pin him or submit. They could walk out as for a shot of the title. But or if Sean walks out. He will not have to deal with them in the near future. We do are expecting an opportunity to see Balanaki. He does have a shot, but the real question is, when will that take place? I'm assuming that he's waiting for the right moment, but we'll see what happens then. But the match was great. I have to say there was a double submission going on. Anything was going you know, one way or the other, or teamwork, however it works. Not to mention, somehow, Yuna ended up outside. Yeah, she was set, was pushed outside through the window. So basically, she was locked up. She tried to get back in, but <laughs> basically, she was too late because Masa Takanashi was able to pull up, of course, an amazing victory by submitting Chon. Now, does this mean he gets an opportunity for the interim title? Well, it most likely can happen. So I don't see why not. Now, on a side note, as soon as these matches were done, I uh, want to be clear balinaki has already left so he was not involved in the junkin tournament he i just looked up today it turns out he was involved in many of the in a three uh, show uh three show 
event by Gambari, and he's on two of them. So he had to make the immediate bounce as soon as it's done. It makes perfect sense why he was part of the first match. So he had to get to the uh, to his to the venue where he's going to wrestle. So it would it would make sense, but there were other people that stepped into his place during Jonkin. Now, as I mentioned before with Jonkin, we normally see regulars win, but when it comes to people who just step foot in Choco Pro, that's kind of rare. You know, we saw that with a few, but this one was amongst them. So Yuko Sakurai was the one who wa walked out with the chocolate when she actually beat in the finals Yuna Mizumuri. And I was surprised that that, no, scratch that. It was Chon. Chon couldn't believe it. Nobody did. So I think it was a pretty good. Now, um, there's still no indications when we will see the next uh, Choco Pro. I'm assuming possibly this coming weekend because, as you all know, we're getting close to 200, and I'm kind of excited and curious to see how it's going to take place. But right now, I think it's time to do the next one, which is one I'm very happy to review for all of you, and I'm very excited. So let's do Taka Tai Chi Mania 3. Okay, so if you guys saw the opening part before getting to this, I put the Just Up Out logo there along with the event because A, Just Tap Out is allowing their promotion to use it as a platform. And of course, New Japan is actually allowing to be broadcast on this event. Now, before I begin, some of you probably would ask me, J-Rod, how can I watch this show? Simple. There's two ways. One, if you have the NJPW on demand, uh, you have to possibly pay extra. If you saw in the in the beginning of this part, you may see it right there again. If you haven't rewind it, you know what I'm talking about. I think you have to pay like almost close to twenty five dollars for that. I don't know how much is that in yen. I'm not good with money, economics, that sort of thing. That's not me or finance. That's not my department. But, however, if you don't want to do that, you can go to WatchProWrestling.Live. They actually have it. So, I've already seen it from there. So, I'm sure you guys probably want that. If you don't want to pay the extra money, go to WatchProWrestling.Live. Live. So, you'll see it from there. So, the opening match, this one, this one was pretty good. Now, the opening match, we have tag team action. I'm assuming these are like the, tr the wrestlers on training. We have Akira Jonji, Ju, uh, Jumonji, and Genta Yurabi versus Sakiya, uh, Sakiya and Fire Katsumi. Now, I don't know these guys. It's been a while since I seen just tap out, but it was a very, you know, it was a decent match, but not too much pump for it. I don't know it's because the thing is like it's. It wasn't like how expected. So I just enjoyed the match. It was okay. So it was fine. But it was um, um, Sakiya, uh, Sakiya who actually picked up the victory by pinning um, Genta. I was like, I think it was Genta. Well, I'll, I'll remember. But it was a pretty good one. So I liked it. Now our next match is we have the women's taking the stage right here. We have six women tag team match. We have... Now Ishikawa, Yako, and Ram Kaucho taking on Misa, Kagura, Rhythm, and Sumaki ya, um, ya na, na ya Gaiwa. <sighs> Can't pronounce it right. But I have to say the match was okay, you know. I mean, I have seen many of these women before on previous Just Tap Out events, but it was okay, it was decent. Um, I think it was um, Mas Misa who picked up the victory. I was like impressed. However, they decided to continue the beating the losing team. I thought it was all right. Now our next match is tag team action. We got Arata teaming with member of the Strong Hearts T Hawk taking on Eagle Mask and Ruya uh, 
Takekura. So I have seen these two before. Well, all, all of these guys before I've seen them. They're pretty good. Um, I think what I enjoyed about this is, of course, Seahawk, I did not anticipate him that he was going to be the one to pick up the victory. But it was him, and he was the one who pinned Eagle Mask. Uh, it was surprisingly. I would have assumed it had to be someone from Jazz Tap Out, but no, it was the strong heart who actually did it. So I was, it was pretty good. I liked it. Next up, another uh, tag team with women's this time. We got Ayo. I never heard of her. Teaming with Toko, um, Tomoka Inaba. I have to say, Tomoka really impressed me because she has that. She comes out like in the and with the gi, and I and if you guys don't know this, I actually uh, took martial arts back a couple years back, and she did like one of those stances that do like you know, uh, I forgot what the kata moves. If you guys are experts in karate, I thought it was good. Their opponents is Maya Yukihi, who I've seen before on many occasions, and of course you uh, Yamagata, who I've seen also as well, a veteran in the wrestling world. In the Japanese wrestling world, uh, it was pretty good. I have to say, it was very nice. But I was a bit of surprised of seeing this person I never seen, Io, who picked up the victory. It was very, very surprising, but it was okay. I like it. It was uh, really fun. Now our next match, this definitely you might like. We got a submission tag team match. We have Ren Ayabe teaming with Kanon. Now I have seen Kanon before. He's good too, from what I can tell. Their opponent is none other than Suzuki Goon, Zack Saber Jr. and Minoru Suzuki. Now keep in mind, the only way to win this match is by submission. I did not know how to expect a submission tag team match. I mean, I have seen a, a submission match one on one, but in tag team, that's a different story. But I was happy with the results because this was like in the wheelhouse for both men, for both. Suzuki and Zack Sabre Jr. Because, oh, excuse me, Zack Sabre Jr. is a technical wrestler. So you guys can see why. But with Minoru Suzuki, you know he's capable of anything. But it was Zack Sabre Jr. who picked up the victory for his team. It was great. I enjoyed it so much. Now our next match, we have Taka Michinuku taking on El Desperado. So basically... Suzuki Goon versus Suzuki Goon showdown. I was like, this was a much intensified match because at most of the time, Taka was trying to, how do I say, hurt um, Desperado's knees, like trying to dislocate him or try to slow him down as much as possible to win. But however, it what when it comes to Desperado, he is one of the best junior heavyweights right now in New Japan. And I know many fans love the guy. He is, in fact, one of those re well recognizable wrestlers, but he was able to put uh, Taka away when he applied the pinchy loco and allowing himself to win the one, two, three. But, however, I'm not sure if Taka has a si if he wants to have a shot of the IWGP junior heavyweight title. So, I'm trying to t determine if that is going to take happen. I should say we got to let that happen. I would love to see that match. I don't know if Taka's ever got the title before. I need to. Do research on that. Now, our next is our main event. We have Doiki versus Taichi. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, and I forgot. Miho Abe was there, too. It was great to see the Lucky Charm being there. So, anyway, this I have to say, this match between Doiki and Taichi was one of the best matches of the night. The reason I see say that is because this was more, to me, Doiki could have had the opportunity to shine. You see, many people have talked about Doiki, about what he is. Some people are fans. Doiki had impressed me during the best of the Super Juniors. He had some great wins he had. And I think this is one of the best matches I've seen so far as a fan. But I, for the start of the year, I have to say, Doiki has, this is the best match for him in 2022. Unless something can overcome that. But... I just love it. He even put what uh, how, how, how um, Gino Gambino calls the doiki choiki on on Tai Chi on many occasions, but he did not tap out no matter what. But there was one of the guys from the broadcast. I don't know who he is to to doiki. 
he's trying to get him to rile up, like trying to say, like, come on, get up, you can do this, finish it up. So basically, he was giving him encouragements to get himself back up and finish the match. But unfortunately, it did not happen for him. Um, tai Chi did that infamous kick on Tidoki to allow him to win the match. One, two, three. So Tai Chi won the match. I have to say, the, this match, the main event, best match ever. I love it. I have to say, this is the best match Doiki has ever done so far, as I've as I seen as a fan. But this could be the the match of 2022 for him, you know, if that's the case. But uh, during the post match, he actually uh, Tai Chi had some words to say to him. I don't know who he is. I think he was impressed by Doiki about his ability, even though. It was a disappointing loss to Doiki, but however, this will not be the last match where we see Doiki put up his best effort. I mean, I have to say he's very impressive. Now, however, the the, the night did not end right there. All members of Suzuki Goon showed up. Kanemaru, who was on commentary, showed up. But however, what I did not know, today, January 10th, is the birthday of of Miho Abe. Happy birthday, Miho. Yeah, so it's her birthday, but I think the best moment I enjoyed when they were celebrating her birthday is Minoru Suzuki coming out with a cake. And we all know what happens when it comes when you get cake. You get caked. <laughs> and I, I think it was really fun. I think Miho really had a lot of great time. I think it was a lot of fun. But if I have to rate this show, I have to say I give it a, somewhere between an 8 or 9. I, I just love the show. The first two matches, I'm like, eh. But the rest, great. I love it. So, But I, like I said, the main event, Doki and Taichi, best match ever. I loved it. So, and once again, now for those who want to see this one, there's two ways, as I mentioned. Either you go to, if you have NJPW On Demand. You may have to pay extra money, like 25 bucks or so. Or if you just want to watch it for free, go to watchprowrestling.live. So either way, you guys will enjoy it. So I think that's pretty much it, what I got for now. And I believe it's time for me to call it a day. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed me reviewing these two events. I mean, they're amazing to watch. I hope you guys pay attention when I mentioned about the Taka Tai Chi Mania. Uh, coming up, I will review a past event by West Coast Pro Wrestling, No Leaf Clover, which features the main event, Minoru Suzuki versus Daniel Garcia. Now, if you guys haven't seen that, I will love to review this one too. And also, as you know, as I mentioned, today is the 10th of January. Yesterday, we did had, of course, on the 9th, LA Fights Volume 2. I did not see it because I was occupied you know reviewing the past events from the japanese stock but now it's the perfect opportunity to do that and of course we cannot forget aew dark elevation which i'm always happy to review for all of you so i think that's pretty much it right now that i got so stay tuned for that but for now i'll see you guys in the next dwz time same dwz channel i must bid all of you adieu so Goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day. Bang. <laughs>